is uh, just after 7 o'clock on Tuesday, November 1st, 2022, and uh, this is the regular City Commission meeting of the City of Ormond Beach. I will call us to order at this time, and uh, hope you felt welcomed when you came in tonight by our Deputy Fire Chief, Nate Cordier, and our Utilities Manager, Bob Priest, who served as our greeters this evening. Uh, if you need a card, you want to speak, either during citizen comments or on one of the agenda items, please make sure and see our recording secretary, Taylor Lockhart. She'll get you hooked up. And uh, with that, I'll introduce the folks who are sitting up in front of you. And we'll start uh, to my right, your left, with our recording secretary, Taylor Lockhart. Give a wave, Taylor. Uh, next is city clerk, Susan Dodderus. And then we have Commissioner Dwight Selby from Zone 1. Good evening, everyone. Commissioner Troy Kent from Zone 2. Good evening, everybody. Good to see family and friends. Uh, to my left and your right, our Deputy Mayor and Zone 3 Commissioner, Susan Persis. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Our Zone 4 Commissioner, Rob Littleton. Our City Manager, Joyce Shanahan. City Attorney, Randy Hayes. And way over there to the left and way over there to your right, we have our police chief, Jesse Godfrey. And it looks like Nate sitting in for our, our fire chief, our deputy chief, uh, Nate Cordier, joining us tonight. At this time, if you would please silence your cell phones. And uh, I was going just a little slow, hoping that, that our pastor would show up to give the invocation. But pastor, okay, fantastic. Pastor, if you would come on up. If you all would please rise for the invocation. It will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for the day, and I am certainly grateful for the city of Ormond Beach and for the home that it's become to my family. Father, it's my sincere prayer tonight that you would continue to protect this city and its inhabitants. Lord, I pray for these men and women as they lead this great city. I pray, Father, that you would grant them your wisdom and your discernment as they lead. I pray, Father, that you would grant them a spirit of humility um, that every good leader has. And I pray, Father, that you would surround them with good people. The decisions that are made, Father, would be for the betterment of this community. And, Father, I'm most of all grateful for the home that you promised us in heaven, thanks to your son, Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to uh, do presentations and proclamations, and uh, if I could have Forrest Reed, the general manager from Outback Steakhouse, come forward. Mark Rogers, general manager from Walmart. Brent Kilgard, general manager from Public Supermarket at the Trails Shopping Center. Pastor Rick Cobb from Riverbend Church, and Gabriel Martinez. And then Lewis Heaster, owner of Heaster Family Properties.
right, I brought you all up here. Come on over. Let's center ourselves in front of the commission because we're going to do a picture after this. All right, Forrest from Outback, will you raise your hand so that the crowd can see who you are? And then Mark from Walmart. Brent from Publix. He's just talking about what a great company Publix is. Uh, Lewis Heaster, Heaster Properties. Uh, Pastor Rick Cobb, Riverbend Church, and Gabriel Martinez as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, these folks are amazing community supporters, and they've done an amazing job for us during this last storm event that we experienced a couple weeks ago. Uh, I want to read the proclamation so that you know uh, everything that these folks did to support our staff while our staff was working for all of you. And uh, the proclamation kind of says it all, but honestly, I've heard from our residents about each and every one of you, as well as our employees about each and every one of you. So uh, we really appreciate what you do. Whereas on September 28, 2022, Hurricane Ian caused a path of destruction as a Category 4 storm on the west coast of Florida. It traveled across the entire state as it shifted to a tropical storm with severe winds, life-threatening storm surges, and caused major flooding across the state, including the Ormond Beach area. And whereas Ormond Beach is a community of generous residents and businesses that have gone above and beyond by donating food and supplies to first responders and essential city workers before, during, and following the storm. And whereas Forrest Reed, general manager of Outback Steakhouse, donated prepared meals for first responders, including 65 chicken dinners for Public Works employees. Whereas Mark Rogers, Walmart general manager, approved a donation of a $250 gift card used to purchase meal supplies needed before the storm and donated cases of meat and produce used for two days of meals for police officers. And whereas Brent Kilgard, general manager of Public Supermarket at the Trail Shopping Center, personally donated several sandwich trays, and the store donated three shopping carts of salads, subs, sushi, and pre-made meals that served as grab-and-go food for officers during and after the storm. And whereas Riverbend Church provided officers with a safe and quiet place to sleep and donated meals prepared by Gabriel Martinez. And whereas Lewis Heaster, owner of Heaster Family Properties, coordinated and provided meals from a local business that were delivered to the police department during the early portion of the cleanup process. Because of all that, because of all the things that these businesses do in non-emergency times that many of you may never hear about or know about, I, I have the privilege of hearing about it. I think the commission knows of some of the other things that these great individuals do. But because of that, I, Bill Partington, Mayor of the City of Ormond Beach, Florida, on behalf of the entire commission and our entire city staff, do hereby proclaim November 1st, 2022, as a day to recognize the Hurricane Ian community supporters in the City of Ormond Beach and urge all residents to join as we express our deepest gratitude for their service to our city, staff, and community. Congratulations. Thank you.
I just want to, I mean, I know these guys are all leaving, but I want to tell you just real quickly a little bit. Outback Steakhouse, a lot of people don't realize, this is the number number one performing Outback Steakhouse in the region, even, even beating stores in Jacksonville. They do an amazing job. Uh, it's because of great customer service, uh, and it's because the Ormond Beach community supports them as well. Uh, Mark Rogers over at Walmart, I think you all know how hard they work for our community, uh, and they work with the city constantly to make improvements. There's charging stations there now because of their cooperation, uh, and that wasn't necessarily an easy task, but they worked with us to do that. Brent Kilgard, I can't say enough about Publix. Uh, Publix, just in the last year and a half, two years, has pumped $15 million into this community because they believe in Ormond Beach. They know the, the value here, and uh, they took over the old food lion, and they're going to be there for, for years and years, and then they redid the trails as well. So their commitment to Ormond Beach is strong. And then uh, Pastor Rick Cobb, the Riverbend Church community, they do an amazing Amazing job, not only as part of our faith community, Norman Beach, but if you've ever had Gabriel Martinez's cooking, people rave about it. I mean, it's worth going there just just for that alone. And then Lewis Heaster, <clears throat> quietly, uh, as a business person, does a lot of great things in this community, really in, in the central part of Florida. And so I just wanted to, to highlight them especially. For that. All right, we're going to move on now to uh, recognition of outgoing commissioners. And I don't know, I mean, in, in recent history, I can't remember when three have ever left at one time. So it's a pretty unusual circumstance for us. And uh, this is perfect timing because I see one Publix employee coming in now that's a very special person, Commissioner Kent's son, Wyatt. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and so, Commissioners Kent, Selby, and Littleton, if you all would join me down here. I'm going to say some comments, and uh, Susan kindly left me some uh, flexibility on the agenda on how to how to structure this. So just so you guys are prepared, <clears throat> I'm going to make some comments. I'm going to let Deputy Mayor Persis make some comments, our city manager and uh, city attorney make some comments, and then we'll go to you for comments. I think it would be nice in during your comments, maybe at the end, if you called your family up for the presentation of the roses, and, uh, and I'll, at the end present you all with the uh, final gift. And uh, I think that'll cover that'll cover just about everything. the The main things I wanted to uh, comment about and make sure you had some remarks along these lines as well. Uh, first of all, your families, our families, everyone up here, uh, the families sacrifice a lot of the elected officials. They didn't choose necessarily uh, the path that, that you gentlemen did or that we did, but uh, I'm sure they were consulted and and they agreed to it because they love you or they love us. And so uh, I don't want to get too far away from, from recognizing the families and how much a part of it they are and what a debt of gratitude that the city owes to each and every one of them. And then the, the second thing, gentlemen, I wanted to, uh, as this 
year comes to an end, so does the role of these three incredible individuals who have served our city with distinction. And I want to express my sincerest thank you to uh, City Commission members Selby, Kent, and Littleton. It's always been clear, three, uh, these three gentlemen, it's always been clear that you take your role seriously, you do what you believe is right, you love the city of Ormond Beach, you've made tremendous sacrifices uh, to serve and provide service in this community, and individually and as a group, you have protect this, protected this city and made it better. Each of us only gets uh, so much time in this life and that you have given so much of yours in service to this city is remarkable and truly quite inspiring. On any given commission agenda, you have been making decisions that will impact several generations on topics ranging from police and fire protection, budget, taxes, the arts, trees, transportation, parking, road maintenance, homelessness, housing, parks, land use, cell service, water quality, sewers, utility rates, vendor contracts, opioid impacts, business health, and that's to name just a few. Uh, to do this, you have to attend the commission meetings, you have to attend committee meetings, you have to attend hearings and public meetings, public events, and have to prepare for all of that. Uh, your council packets easily are often more than a thousand pages and it's a lot of time and effort and you don't do it for the money or for the recognition. So uh, each of you will be missed for many reasons. When I look back at the accomplishments or the impact that you all have made, uh, probably the biggest one in the last six years was getting through the pandemic. And not just getting through it, but thriving through it and after it. We got through the pandemic as safely as possible while keeping our freedoms intact. And that was in large part due to your your leadership. And so I think, you know, when people look back historically, this period will be remembered for that and your leadership through that will be, will be well remembered. Dwight, uh, you know, and there's other things. I'm not going to be able to cover everything, but Dwight, your leadership in the realm of clean water and protecting the environment has been incredible and will leave a lasting mark. Troy, uh, Deputy Mayor Kent, Andy Romano Beachfront Park has your fingerprint all over it. Uh, movies on the Halifax has your fingerprints all over it. Fishing, the fishing tournaments has your fingerprints all over it. Free garage sales has your fingerprints all over them. Um, and there's so many more uh, in 19 years, I, I can't really cover them all, but, and so forgive me for that. But, and then Rob, uh, as a budget hawk, someone who's fiscally principled, and uh, really took the time to care about the funding and staffing of our police and fire departments and equipping of them, creating that dedicated millage. I think you had a you played a big part in that. That was all of you, but but Rob, you were a leader in that. So, uh, do you have Susan the Athenian oath? Can you put that up for me? I'll close out my comments, which have been too long already, and I apologize for that, but I want to uh, read the Athenian Oath because I think you gentlemen have lived up to that oath, and it's an important uh, important one. And I can pull it up on my, uh, on my iPad if I need to.
going to be a tie there, Taylor. That's fine. She got it? Perfect. I'll read it off of here, actually, just because it'll be... The Athenian Oath. We will never bring disgrace to this our city by any act of dishonesty or cowardice, nor ever desert our suffering comrades in the ranks. We will fight for the ideal and sacred things of the city, both alone and with many. We will revere and obey the city's laws and do our best to incite a like respect in those above us who are prone to annul or set them at naught. We will strive unceasingly to quicken the public sense of civic duty. Thus, in all these ways, we will transmit this city not only, not less, but greater and more beautiful than it was transmitted to us. Congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Purchase, say a few words. Should I come back down here and speak? I get to finish. Okay. I should have just stayed down there. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm going to start with Dwight. I wasn't prepared for anything, so I'm going to speak to my heart to all three of you, so I want you, I want you to know that. First of all, Dwight, I really totally respect your expertise and knowledge and all the information you give to us at meetings. You research so much, and you know so much, and you have a great memory, and I'm always just, you know, I always admire that about you. I've come to learn you're such an honorable man, you're a family man, you love your wife, you love your kids, you love your grandkids, and that's just wonderful. And I know you have so many wonderful family times coming up. I'm sure you have lots of things planned. I'm going to really miss you because, you know, this is sad. this is hard. I'm going to really miss you being up here, and I so appreciate getting to know you. So thank you for all of your sound and sage advice. Troy. You're, you've been an amazing asset to the city of Ormond Beach for 19 years. That's amazing. I don't know that there's anybody that's done it any longer than you. I haven't researched that, Dwight, so, but I know it's a long time. I know you're an amazing assistant principal. I hear so many good things about you, and I, you have been an amazing deputy mayor and city commissioner all these years. And I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors from the bottom of my heart. I see your family out here supporting you. You have That's such a wonderful thing to have everybody here for you. And, um, you know, don't take that for granted. It's wonderful. And I wish you the best in everything that you want in life. Rob, I have so enjoyed sitting next to you. We sometimes share jokes. We, we laugh at, at certain things. And um, I've enjoyed getting to know you. You are really a kind man, is what I've come to know, and I really admire you, and I think the world of you. Um, you have a beautiful daughter, wife, and son, and you have the, your whole future ahead of you. I know good things are going to come for you. You're brilliant. You're smart. I love how you succinctly say things, and you just get it right out there. It's, it's amazing, and I've learned a lot from that, because sometimes I could rattle on and on a little bit, and I like how you put things into perspective in a nice, short way. Um, I'm just very proud of you. I'm proud to know all three of you, really, and I hope I can continue to see you and out, out there, and, and um, I just wish everyone the best, and I'm really, really going to miss all of you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Deputy Mayor, and now we will go to City Attorney Randy Hayes. I would echo everything <clears throat> that uh, Deputy Mayor Persis has, <clears throat> has had to say. Um, and you've heard me say this before, uh, public service is a humbling experience. It takes a special person, a special family. Um, you know, our roles are different than yours and, and that of the city manager. We get to see the struggle up here as you <clears throat> try to balance the competing interests in the decision-making process. And uh, it truly is a humbling experience. <clears throat> Each of you are special talent. We're going to miss you. Um, it also reminds me that politics by nature is, a, is an evolutionary process. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what the next chapter is going to bring to you, you, you will all succeed. We're all better because you've been up here. We've all learned from you. We're going to miss you, um, but we're just a phone call away. Thank you. Good stuff. And then, thank you, Randy, and City Manager Joyce Shanahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Gentlemen, your tireless and selfless service to this community has made it a better place. All of your fingerprints are all over this community, from walking down Granada to the Christmas celebrations to the Discovery Center, the uh, funding of police, uh, police and fire vehicles. I know nobody else in the state that has a proactive plan to fund those services. Your dedicated selfless service has made Ormond a better place. Your family sacrifice in each and every day that you are doing your work for the city, it, it, it touches my heart. Nobody knows that where you've been. I've been the most fortunate city manager that there is to spend the last 13 years here in Ormond Beach with most of you all. Um, you've pushed me to be a better leader. You've challenged staff to do things more efficiently and more effectively. You've tightened the belt straps on the budget to make sure that we're fiscally um, sound. And we are a stronger and better community for each of your service. And to that I say thank you very much. Thank you, Joyce. And now it's going to get crowded up here as we bring some family members up. But uh, Commissioner Selby will... We'll start with you, and we'll just come on down the line. Come on up, honey. <laughs> this is everybody that lives in my house with me. This is my uh, my beautiful. This is my girlfriend. Uh, how how long we've been married, honey? Thirty. Thirty. It'll be forty, won't it? Yeah, thirty. Thirty nine years. getting out the paper those of you that know me know I, I when I speak I usually rarely ever write anything down and uh, I was at a meeting after work today um, and I said I better write some stuff down just just to make sure I don't mess this up uh, but I want to start by thanking the mayor because it's important to me that my family is here and the mayor stalled the meeting <laughs> He was talking about everybody. Waiting for my kid to get here from work. So thanks. 19 years, I started this job single. I weighed like 40 pounds less. <laughs> and I'm married and have three children and two grandchildren now. Approximately 456 meetings three that I can remember I missed. The birth of Wyatt. Wyatt in the Little League uh, championship game that Commissioner Bohm said, you better not come to that meeting. You better be at that game. You'll never forgive yourself. And they won the championship. So it was great. Great to be there. And then I was sick one day. Um, the accomplishments I'm most proud of, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. The height limit in Norman Beach. We don't look like Daytona Beach. Our tax rate, 
sewer rate. Fire Station 91, it's on the beach side. It has a fire station themed playground. Andy Romano, the mayor talked about Andy Romano Beachfront Park, what a special guy. The kids fishing tournament, talked about that. Movies on the Halifax, talked about that. The Splash Park at the South Ormond Neighborhood Center. Uh, we have a group of kids that live over by our South Ormond Neighborhood Center and they don't know how to swim. And the commission years ago decided that we were going to fund a splash park and they have a splash park at the South Ormond Neighborhood Center. The redevelopment of our downtown behind us, if you looked at a picture of that place 15 years ago, you, you just forget what it looked like. Reuse water to the South Peninsula, the redoing of Rockefeller Gardens, Ormond Beach Memorial Gardens, my mom's favorite, the double left turn green lane from South Halifax to Granada. It's her favorite thing ever. You know, this job has uh, allowed me to have some friendships, some new ones. Pat and Bob Benke, Sue Parkerson, Wright Hundredmark, Joe Daniels, I see him back there. Greg Stokes, Ike Leary, I see him there. Rick and Sheila Miner, Fred Hain, and Wendy Hans. And I'm going to tell you, I got, I got to my, we all got to our spot tonight. And there was this card, and on it were two almond joys, because every meeting, at the end of every meeting, we have a, a candy dish for each commissioner, and I grab the whole candy dish and bring it home and give it to my kids when I get home. Wyatt, it's always he gets, he, you know, he gets the candy, and Commissioner Selby looked at me a few years ago and says. Why are you always taking this candy home? And I said, well, I give it to Wyatt. And I told him, he said, start taking my candy dish. So Wyatt, <laughs> Wyatt actually called Commissioner Selby, what was it, two years ago or so, and just said, I just want to thank you for all the candy. Um, but there's this card up here, and I open it up, and Wendy used to work in our city clerk's office, and she came tonight, I think, to see all of us off. And she taped a candy bar onto each of our envelopes, and she put Almond Joy, which she knew was one of my favorites, and in my candy dish, always made sure there was Almond Joy there. It was thoughtful, and I just wanted to say thank you. I appreciate it. This job's allowed me to reconnect with some childhood friends. Travis Sargent, where is he? Travis and I went to the same elementary school together. Travis and I knew each other as kids, but we didn't reconnect until Travis started coming to the city hall and paying attention. And, He's your Zone 2 City Commissioner-elect, and I'm super proud of him and excited. And, you know, the new ideas you're going to bring to the city, I'm, I'm excited for the city and for you. Uh, Harold Briley, he's in the audience. You know, knew Harold when I was in high school as well. And he went, he went to school with my sister, Julie. And after November 15th, because we're still commissioners until November 15th, until these new people get sworn in. So we're still commissioners until that until that day. But after November 15th, Joyce and Randy, I'm no longer your boss. I'm just your friend. My goal when elected 19 years ago was to make Ormond better. I feel like I did that, and I'm leaving it better than when I found it. So I want to thank staff. But now I want to thank my, my family. And number one, my wife. So come on up. Nope, nope, nope. Bring that baby. You bring that baby Hudson boy up here. And my daughter, Gabby, you come up here. And my son, Wyatt, come on up here. And now everybody else, my mother, my father, my sisters, Julian, uh, Jeannie and Sue, Albert, Tim, come on up here, your family. So thanks for listening to me for a few minutes. Uh, these people mean a tremendous amount to me. And it's been an honor to serve Ormond Beach and to serve with this commission and several other commissions. And the last group I want to thank are the Zone 2 residents because they entrusted me all these years. And they're my boss. So thank you, Zone 2. Let me get a picture.
<laughs> well, thank you. I, I tried to reflect on when I first was elected to Zone 4, and I had no beard, single bachelor, and, and weighed about the same amount. And now I have a beard, and I'm married with children, and obviously it was the beard, right, that did it. I, I looked at that growth, the personal growth, and it made me reflect upon the growth the city has had, not just physically, but growth comes through adversity. And that segues into the thing I'm most proud of, and that would be how this commission and staff has handled adversity. We've had, I think, three storms slash hurricanes. We, of course, uh, dealt with a contentious 2020 election with dueling protests at the Granada Bridge every week that whole year, it seemed like, and of course, the COVID pandemic. And through that, Ormond Beach still has a 15% general fund reserve, but more importantly, we're still a great place to live. People still want to live here, and I, that's what I'm most proud of. And I want to thank the commission and staff because you guys made being up here really easy. And when dealing with adversity, this is one of, why I like the commission so much. It would have been very easy, and there's many examples where politicians could have screwed it up. But we act like elected officials. And staff acts professional, and that's what we expect of them. And that's why this city is the best place to live in Volusia County. And I'm honored to have served the citizens of them for, and the city as a whole. Thank you. used to give a wristwatch. I don't know when, Commissioner Kent, you may remember, was it 2008, 2009? That tradition that tradition went away, but now we have... I'll present, it. present your official clock to each of you. Commissioner Selby? Commissioner Kent and Deputy Mayor Kent? Commissioner Littleton. Thank you all. If you want to leave these here. It took a little bit of time, and uh, if anybody knows me, you know I like to move the meeting along, but this was important, I thought, to recognize you gentlemen, so I wanted it to take as much time as it needed to take. So We are at audience remarks, and we will start with Kelly Forrester. Says and Tim Harper. I'm not sure. Okay. 
Good evening, um, Mr. Mayor, City Commissioners, staff, citizens. Um, we're first time small business owners and we just want to give a huge shout out to Ormond Beach. Um, the city has been so welcoming. Um, the Chamber of Commerce, David Walls, he has been so supportive. Um, gonna... Yeah, so we've been in real estate for over 10 years. Uh, we're Palm and Pine Realty uh, over, over here in Ormond Beach. We just did a very funny event last week and uh, we're just so humbled uh, to see the outpouring support of other small businesses, uh, but also the, the commerce ambassadors that are there. We had about 70 people that showed up and uh, we had about a half dozen ambassadors show up as well. Uh, so we just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you guys uh, and also all the support that we received. And uh, you know, it was a little scary jump for us at first, but it's, it's kind of uh, enlightening to see the support that we're getting as small business owners. Uh, and then also we just wanna uh, say, you know, we've been here for residents for over 10 years and you know, even though we may sell in other cities just a little bit south of us, uh, nothing really uh, gets our faces beaming more than when we have to talk about Ormond Beach and our love of it. Uh, so, you know, you guys are doing a fabulous job and we just want to extend that uh, appreciation. Thank you. Thank and you. welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Best wishes. Next is Colby Almond. Colby Allman, 953 Village Drive. I speak today to highlight the extraordinary care that our commission has devoted to our citizenry. The effort put forward by you to fight for the best interest of our residents cannot be understated. The extra care our local leaders have taken to remain in touch with their people and to be easily reached is truly sublime. It's a true privilege. In some other places, it may as well be easier to locate Bigfoot than the people in charge, <laughs> but not Norman. Even in a case of a disagreement or a failure to understand, you still give each of us the fair chance for our voices to be heard. And the honest dedication of this commission to our residents is unquestionable. Even in the face of virulent growth or the county itself, each of you put our residents first. And that commitment is a cornerstone of what makes Ormond the paradise that it is. And those of you who will be stepping down from the dais and those who will remain here, thank you truly. Thank you, Colby. All right, the uh, minutes from the City Commission meeting of October 18th, 2022 have been uh, sent to the Commission for review, also posted to the City's website. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? If not, I just need a motion to move approval of the minutes. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. We'll show those passing unanimously and the consent agenda does any commissioner wish to pull any item off of the consent agenda motion to approve the consent agenda a second moved and seconded please call the vote commissioner selby yes commissioner kent yes commissioner persis yes commissioner littleton yes mayor partington yes and now would be the appropriate time if any commissioner wanted to comment on the consent agenda? Then we will move to uh, the public hearings. <clears throat> I'll open the public hearings and we'll start with 9A. Ordinance number 2022-32, an ordinance amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01, Established of Article 1, Establishment of Zoning Districts and Official Zoning Map of Chapter 2, District and General Regulations of the City of Ormond Beach Land Development Code 
by amending the official zoning map to rezone three parcels of real property totaling approximately 33.31 acres, generally located at Old Dixie Highway and Plantation Oaks Boulevard, Volusia County Property Appraiser Parcel Numbers 3124-00-0022-3239-03-17-0130 and 3239-03-07-0100 from Ormond Beach PRD Planned Residential Development and Volusia County R-3 Urban Single Family to Ormond Beach SE Special Environmental Authorizing Revision of Official Zoning Map, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of Ordinance Number 2022-32, read by title only. Thank you. I do have one card, Evan Altis. Uh, good evening. I actually didn't have that much to say about this. I, I had just written my name on the card in case you know something came up, like the directions go, and it was really the, the most interesting item on the agenda. Uh, so I'm really mo more of a, an observer here tonight. But uh, I just did want to say, uh, Commissioner Kent, uh, some of the, the, the things that you've done in your tenure here have been um, some of the things that have made me most interested in getting, getting involved in Mormon government. And so I, I appreciate your contributions. Thank you. Thank you, Evans. I don't have any other cards. Just need a motion and a second. I'm going to approve. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, last no, no thank you. <laughs> My last meeting sounds so ominous. I know, I know. You go ahead. Uh, move approval of Ordinance 2022-32. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Commissioner Persis. I just um, wanted to let everyone know that um, like about 10 days ago, um, I was... I, I scheduled a meeting with Mr. Paytas, his son, uh, Steve Spraker, um, Dwight Durant, and three residents that live near this, you know, potential development. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was Tattersall. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, gee. Don't be sorry. Okay, I apologize. I've only done that a million times. So. Okay. Yep. Okay. I take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> any other any other discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And 9B. Ordinance number 2022-33, an ordinance authorizing the execution and issuance of a planned residential development development order for the Tattersall at Timber Creek subdivision authorizing a phase phased subdivision of 129 lots on 84.14 plus acres to be zoned to be located at 304 North Timber Creek Road parcel ID number 4124-00-00-0240-2099 Airport Road parcel ID number 4123-00-00-0012 and 370 North Timber Creek Road, parcel ID number 4124-00-00-0250, establishing conditions and expiration of approval and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2022-33, read by title only. Thank you, Susan. And I do have a few cards. We'll start with David Jewell, followed by Jim Mozo. David Jewell, 2040 Tony Street, Ormond Beach. <clears throat> Sorry, I missed the last meeting. Had oral surgery that day. I couldn't be here. Um, my concerns will always be with drainage, flooding, and building on top of our aquifer in that area. Mr. Pateas says he can't release more water into Grover Creek than what already flows there now. Then they tell planning board, they will be excavating a new channel across the northern property line to help move the water from Leeway Trail area to Grover Creek, which is the same amount, or is it more water? Um, no response as to what happens to all this water when it goes into Grover Creek. 
Mr. Patea says that's not their problem. He said that will be a county issue because he isn't responsible for Grover Creek. Nobody's looking at where the water's going to go after he puts it into the creek. Um, the plans to build look good from a taxing point of view for Ormond Beach. Uh, that would be good for the area. But I'm afraid that the problems created by building on this tortured piece of land may far exceed any tax returns. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Jim Mozo, followed by Kelly McBurney. Good evening, and first, thank you all for your service to Ormond Beach. We appreciate that. Um, I'm a little concerned about the flooding problem that's going to be happening here. I'm not, I can't go along with the, the drainage plans they have. They're going to make uh, the back property come along south and then east and then turn back north and drain into Ruger's Branch. That, that was a planning meeting that I attended. So we're going to add more water to Ruger's Branch already. We saw that. 11 days after the hurricane we left on vacation the day before we came back on the 9th and I went out first thing and looked at uh, Ruger's branch that flowed under uh, Timber Creek and flowed under the airport road that was over its banks the people who lived opposite on the east side of Timber Creek you could see where it almost came up in their backyard now that's Volusia County part of it I've heard an employee say that's not the problem. They don't care about that. Well, it is a problem, and we need to consider everybody else in this, in this development what's going to happen. We also have the swale being built to drain from uh, Deer Run or Deer Creek. We've got a second source of water coming in to Brewers Branch. How's that going to affect? Is this going to tear up everything? Can Brewers Branch? handle it, going downstream to at least 15 pieces of land, what's going to happen with that? We have to be responsible for that. There's also a section of this development that is under flood uh, flood zone. What's going to happen to those houses? $400,000, $500,000 house, are they going to flood? Are they going to be able to get insurance in the state of Florida with our insurance problems? Will they be able to get affordable insurance? And I also heard a commissioner about a year ago say, hey, I'd like to pass it because of the tax base of the agreement. One reason we want, we got to look at all the reasons. So uh, please consider everything. It's going to flood people in the county. It's going to flood people across the street. This, the engineers say it will work. It will not. This was a hurricane, oh, this was a tropical storm that flooded. What happens when a hurricane, or a hurricane category two? This will not work. People are going to be flooded. People are going to get hurt. There's going to be huge property damage. Until we get a bet, it's, it's going to go eventually. It's going to get built. We know that. But right now, this plan is not going to work. Just a tropical storm causes that problem. Now we're going to put more water. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Kelly McBurney, followed by Kathy Ulbricht. Hi, my name is Kelly McBurney. I don't live in Ormond Beach property. I do live in the unincorporated part of Lucia County, but I am in the zone that is affected by this development. I've been to a lot of the meetings. I didn't know about the last one, so I missed it. But um, I've gone round and round with them, and my ans the, the answers that I got, we don't create any more rain. Well, no, you don't create any more rain, but you're taking the existing rain and you're channeling it into a swell along the western edge between Tattersall and city property so you're taking all that water 
into a swell, you're running it north, then you're running it east into Groover Branch. All right, that water doesn't necessarily, it, that doesn't go into Groover Branch. That water floods those two areas. That's what it's supposed to do. And then it's supposed to percolate down and supply my water because I live on a well. I don't water my grass with well. I live on that well. That's what I drink. And all of my neighbors use that water. So we, yeah, we do have issues. My neighbors live on Groover Creek. And yeah, we've seen it come up. And we do worry that you're adding more water. And it's not just the water from the city property and their property. They're talking about putting a culvert under leeway to drain property that was a swamp. And now floods leeway because that property was allowed to build and build up and fill that swamp and not manage the water property. They're going to take that water and run it into Groover's Creek. All that water doesn't go into Groover's Creek. It's supposed to flood those areas. I'm sorry for the farmers, but they knew what they bought. This area is all supposed to flood temporarily. And all that flood water is supposed to percolate down into our aquifer, which is still low. It's got a long ways to go to recover still. And we're just, you know, we realize people have a right to live in Florida, just not on this property. This property is supposed to stay wet. I still haven't heard any documentation of the flora and fauna that's in there. And I know for a fact, because I've been in there, there is protected species of both in that area. And none of it's been cataloged yet. So, just food for thought and appreciate what you guys have done. I love Ormond Beach. It's a great little town. Thank you, Kelly. Kathy Obert. The back property line of my property is the middle of Groover Creek. And I've had enough, I got enough flooding from the Hurricane Ian Ian that I don't need any more water from Catastrophe Project. And besides all the water, there's also additional traffic. I live in between those two schools. And there's certain periods of time that it's impossible to get out of my room. And I don't, I've seen that property in the raining season. I wouldn't want a house that was built on that property in the first place. That's all swamp land. And we don't need any more water being drained into the roof tree. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Watts, on behalf of the applicants. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, for the record, Mark Watts with the law firm of Cobb Cole, 231 North Woodland Boulevard, uh, to land. And if I can start on a personal note, um, I have the opportunity to spend a lot of time at city commission meetings and county council meetings, both in, you know, kind of throughout Volusia County and some of the surrounding counties as well. And um, thank you the three of you that, that are here for the last time this evening as in this capacity. Um, it takes a lot of uh, time, energy, and effort uh, to do what you've done for 19 years in uh, Commissioner Kent, your case. Uh, but even for you know, one term, it's it's a lot of time, effort, and energy, and uh, both the sacrifice that you made and those that your family's made. Um, you know, just thank you, for, you know, from my perspective as somebody that spends a lot of time and actually going back even before I started doing this professionally. I got drugged around by my dad to a lot of uh, commission meetings through the years, and um, you know, so it it, uh, it definitely takes a special person to do it. And so, thank you all for the time that you spent here. Um, I, I don't I don't have a presentation for you. I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Uh, we have our our same group of, of engineers and, and experts here that are available to answer any questions. Um, with regard to the to the comments, you know, uh, about stormwater concerns and flooding concerns, I'll just reiterate. Um, I think we've uh, provided ample uh, evidence and testimony in the in the prior hearing and, and also at the planning board with regard 
to the fact that what you're what we're asking you to approve tonight doesn't change the regulations that we have to comply with with regard to those stormwater uh, designs and the stormwater regulations and so um, we have a an extremely high level of, of detail that has to be provided with regard to the stormwater design moving forward that will come back to you with regard with the, uh, the preliminary plat um, when this comes forward with construction plans so um, we, we know that we have a high bar um, particularly as it relates to Groover's branch and the concerns that have been uh, raised there um, we I think have uh, tried to go above and beyond uh, what's required at the zoning level to show that you know our confidence that we can meet that bar and, um, and, and kind of pass that test is not misplaced um, and um, we've tried to as you're aware uh, work in addition to kind of designing our site work to solve some of the existing problems in the area as well so our team is here to answer any questions um, thanks as always to your staff um, as I said at the first reading uh, they've been great to work with as we work through the process over the past year and a half or so so um, we're here for any questions you might have any questions for Mark Commissioner Lillard. thank you for Mr. Um, how much of the property is going to be let's say forestry and trees and that type of thing I recall from my was it 38 percent the last yeah it's about 40 percent 38 to 40 percent of the overall property and that doesn't include the areas that are stormwater ponds okay and because you're within a hundred feet I, I think that's the regulation of a water body like that st. John's makes you do other stuff like other regulations what are they correct so Groover's Branch is an out it feeds into the Tomoka River which is an outstanding Florida waterway so there's a diff in addition to not providing any increase in the the speed that water gets to Groover's Branch or the volume of water that goes to Groover's Branch we also have to to maintain strict protections on water quality going in so we have to make sure that the turbidity and everything else doesn't get increased so there's a you know the 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 typical uh, protections that you have with the modern stormwater design are amplified by that OFW designation and so we have to go through kind of both sets of review and, and regulation as we're designing the stormwater system yet. So. Any other questions for Mark at this time? Thank, okay. you. Thank you very much. Yep. Do you want to get it on the floor for for discussion at this point. I move approval ordinance number 2022-33. Second. Moved and seconded Deputy Mayor Persis. Yes. Um, I will start over again. Um, about 10 day days ago, I met with Mr. Paytas and his son, Dwight Durant, and Steve Spraker, and three residents that live nearby like these wonderful people that came here tonight to, to speak. And, um, you know, first of all, I have to say, if I had my way, I wouldn't have anything built there because I like green, I like trees, I, I like all that. But someone owns the property, someone has the right to develop on, develop it. So I feel like my job is to make sure the best thing goes there. And for the people that are going to develop there that care about Volusia County, they care about Ormond Beach and want to do the right thing for Ormond Beach. And I believe that Mr. Paytas is that person. He's a local guy, he's from our county, his reputation uh, is, is fabulous. He's built so many um, other developments and they're wonderful places. They're nice homes and he has a reputation to consider. I don't think that this man sitting there would build something that he thought would people would have flooding. And I mean flooding in their house, not flooding a little bit on the road, but I mean flooding in the houses. I was skeptical, so I met with him and these people and we talked everything out. The pe three people that came to this meeting were totally convinced at the end of the meeting that he was doing the right thing and he was developing developing it in the right way. And I listened to Dwight Durant talk, whom I admire and believe and trust in 100%. And he believes and knows that this development is going to be a great development and that no one's trying to build anything to you know, increase tax dollars or have anybody have any kind of flooding issues, issues, heaven forbid, in our area. So I just wanted everyone to know I had this meeting, I met with these people, and I just felt even more secure and more positive about this development. Anyone else? Mayor, can I 
Commissioner Lee. Mayor, can I ask uh, Mr. Spraker a question? Sure. It's an opinion, Mr. Spraker. So it's a it's 129 yeah. lots, 84 acres, 38 percent is going to be forestry and that type of thing. In your opinion, is that that 38 percent is that a lot of land to leave? Would a, a development leaving 38 percent undisturbed is that a lot? Yes, it's it's above uh, Stephen Spraker, plan director. It's above what our code requires. So our code requires 20 percent excluding the wetlands. So it, they provided 20% of the site as natural acreage, plus in addition to the wetlands. So it is, is a high level, and that's what the plan residential development seeks. It seeks a subdivision design that is above and beyond what is normally allowed in the city. So that is the result of plan development. But again, this is only a zoning document. There is still a, a preliminary plat, which will come back to the city commission, will come back to the planning board, and they'll have a neighborhood meeting. So this is a, a very first step for zoning, the actual details will be uh, available to everyone and available on our website. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. And that's just what I'll say for those in the audience who weren't here last time. You know, I voted against this several months ago when it came up, but with the new development, what they've done, they've done everything a developer could do for this piece of land to be able to, they still have the right to build on it. I, I couldn't ask for anything more. They went above and beyond, 38%, and they still have a right to build on it, you know. So that's why I'm in favor of this project. Thank you. Commissioner Littleton. Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make my comments brief because I spoke a little, uh, at length two weeks ago whenever this project was before us. I would be remiss if I didn't repeat a couple of those, which is Dw Dwight Durant, amazing. Mr. Watts, I told you, you know, you're the guy to hire. I mean, amazing at what you do. You know, excellent job. Uh, I don't know Mr. Paytas, but I've only heard great things about him. I am big on property rights, and I agree you should be able to build um, certain things on your property. Um, you know, as long as the Land Development Code allows it and or, you know, the governing body agrees to the changes that are going to be made. Here's my biggest issue. Volusia County has failed this area. Timber Creek Road and Airport Road is an epic failure two times a day, five days a week. Every morning for school and every afternoon for school. It is a nightmare for the people that live out there. And I am not blaming uh, the schools. I'm not, I'm not blaming the city. What I'm saying is the county has to fix the infrastructure problem before I approve it. And that road cannot handle any more right now. If that road, was Timber Creek Road, was four lane, just beyond Airport Road, went another half mile, uh, Timber Creek, north of Airport Road, I would be saying yes tonight. But the infrastructure's not there so I'm a, I'm a no again, as I was two weeks ago. Thank you. Commissioner, anyone else? I'll just say, uh, before we vote, I was a no last time, and I'm, I'm still a no. Commissioner Kent, I agree with you. Uh, and really, west of 95, it's going to be difficult moving forward to vote for any new development out there until some of the problems that I see with my own eyes are addressed. That's absolutely one of them. Uh, the other one is right at 95. Uh, a few times a day, conditions there are deplorable. I hear it from the residents. I see it with my own eyes. And until that infrastructure is improved to a level that we consider Ormond Beach levels, uh, not much is going to be happening out there. I can tell you. I don't know how the rest of the commission feels, but uh, there's got to be some improvements. Kathy, Kelly, Jim, David, thank you all for coming tonight and sharing your concerns. That's part of what makes this process great. And the good news is you get a second bite at the apple and you get to hold the developer's feet to the fire when that preliminary plaque comes through, and you'll have the opportunity to make sure
sure absolutely that the testing, the modeling, everything required by St. John's River and the city is going to do what they say it's going to do. And uh, that's an important part. I mean, this thing, that could be a year or two down the road, but I hope you all will stay engaged. You know, you can put your name in with our planning director. He will email you and keep you appraised of the process. It's a very public, transparent process. And, you know, you have the opportunity to, to have the final word on that. So I hope you will. Um, so with that, unless anybody has anything else, we can call the vote. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. No. Mayor Partington. No. 9C. Ordinance number 2022-34. In ordinance amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01. Established of article 1, establishment of zoning districts and official zoning map of chapter 2, district and general regulations of the city of Ormond Beach land development code by amending the official zoning map to rezone two parcels of real property totaling approximately 5.73 acres located at 520 and 540 Flagler Road, Volusia County parcel numbers 3136-01-69-0020 and 3136-01-68-0020 from B-7 Highway Tourist Commercial to Planned Business Development PBD, authorizing revision of official zoning map, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of ordinance number 2022-34, read by title only. Thank you. Uh, we'll ask our planning director, Stephen Spraker, to speak on this item. Good evening, Stephen Spraker. There are two items that we wanted to point out um, regarding the applicant's request. The two items are requests uh, for variances. The first is regarding signage. The applicant is requesting three wall signs, each of 150 square feet. Our land development co co code allows one sign of 92.5 square feet. Um, staff recommended two wall signs at 200 square feet, um, same square footage that we allowed for Interstream Depot. Um, the planning board reviewed that recommendation and recommended 3-2 with a two, two sign for 200 square feet. So we want to make sure the commission considers that. The applicant is also here to address the commission. The second item um, of specific concern, they have 15 feet of the property that abuts I-95. That 15 feet abutting I-95 has a 60-foot landscape buffer. They are requesting a 10-foot landscape buffer with the same amount of landscape material to allow two RV and boat parking spaces in that area. At the planning board, there was some confusion regarding what the actual buffer requirement is. Uh, originally, it was thought it was this whole line, but it actually is just this green area here, which would encompass two, two parking spaces. So the planning board and staff both recommend this 60-foot buffer. The applicant, again, is requesting the 10-foot buffer. The planning board um, did recognize there are a number of public benefits, including paving of roadways, stormwater, and additional landscaping that the project is proposing. And again, on those two items, they recommend a 3-2 for two signs at 200 square feet and a 60-foot buffer on um, the area abutting I-95. And the applicant is here um, to address the commission. Thank you. Any questions for Stephen? Yeah, I guess. Commissioner uh, Selby. Yeah, uh, Stephen, just so I'm clear. So the the staff recommendation is two signs, 100 square feet each? Correct, or quite honestly, however they choose to, yeah. a maximum 200 square feet. So if they want to okay. do 150 on one side and 50 on the other. Okay, and the applicant, and may, I guess Mr. Newkirk maybe can speak to that, but the applicant has asked for three signs, 150 square feet each. Is Correct. Right? I, I think their or, goal is to get visibility to I-95. Right and one going northbound and one going southbound. And in the planning board, they basically explained that doing a sign, one sign of, of 100 square feet would be insufficient to have that highway signage. So that's what they were looking for. Well, I didn't catch that last part. The one. So they're, they're seeking to get the signage to I-95. Right. 
one going northbound and one going southbound. Right. In their opinion, they didn't feel that one sign of 100 square feet would accomplish that that visibility on I-95. The they is the applicant? Correct. Okay, yeah. Well, I think I would agree with that. And I also think that comparing it to the, you said that you, you mentioned the storage project that uh, Andy Clark is doing. Correct. At, at, uh, south of 40 off of interchange boulevard there correct yeah so that that one is on the flat area there and directly has big frontage on the interstate i mean several hundred feet right correct and this this site only has 15 feet and it's on the it's on the incline Absolutely. where yeah where the overpass happens so uh, i would be inclined to be reasonable on that signage be, you know support that request because of the, just the physical Differences between the uh, uh, between the locations and, uh, and give them an opportunity to be seen from the interstate. Sure. And then the other one was uh, the buffer. So, so it's a little. I mean, the the corner. This corner is what 15 feet or so. Yes, sir. Um, that that quote fronts on the interstate right away, right? Right. I mean, and, but I mean, when you look at the aerials, when you look at like this this photo right here, um, all of that foliage exists, right? Correct. That's the I ninety five right away. Right. It's the upslope to the ramp. Right. So, so I, I guess my thought is that we may can put sixty feet of landscaping on, that's 15 feet wide just because you know with all of that all that landscaping it's not landscaping it's natural vegetation on the other side of that 60 feet it seems kind of pointless to me right so so staff implements policy or right. staff implements what the land development code says right. land right. development code says 60 right, feet. right 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 if from a policy perspective yeah. the commission wants to to, right. to basically authorize option one we're all for it. Okay. All right. So, and I didn't mean to make that sound like it. No, was no. I, a I, I hear what you're saying, but yeah, the policy. I, I got is, it. I got it. Yeah. So the um, and also I did have a conversation with Mr. Newkirk about this on the phone, and uh, it's my understanding that the the materials, the, the vegetative materials that would be required in that 60 foot buffer, would be planted in other in this, parts of the site. Correct. And in, in, in this area here, so. You're not really losing material. What you're losing is is area. So sort the of material that. remain the same. And again, there are a number of, of public benefits that the project has has proposed, including paving of a road, stormwater for the road, additional landscaping on the front buffer. So from a staff perspective, we're bringing you the options and then allow right. you. Okay. So just for the record, I can support both of these uh, both of these variances or changes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I completely agree with Commissioner Selby. I'm glad we're getting another another bite at this apple the second time as well. So um, I want to talk about the signage a little bit. So the applicant wants three? Correct. Okay. And I'm fine with that, and I'm going to tell you why. The last time that I can remember that we did a change with the signage was for Bruce Ross Meyer with Destination Daytona. And what we had in our land development code was like, you know, you drive by and you couldn't see the sign at the speed you're going. So it made sense for us to make the changes that we made back then. And it makes sense to make those changes again tonight as well. So, Commissioner Zubin, did I hear you correctly? Are you good with the three signs? I'm good with, yeah, I'm good with both changes. I'm good, I'm good with both as well. So whenever the, everyone else talks, the motion's made. As long as the motion is made to accommodate those two, then I, I'm going right. to say yes. Yes, I just wanted to ask the purpose of the 60 foot buffer for 95. I guess that's for to make it look good, right? To, when people are driving by, it looks nice. Is it's that for, the, to provide a substantial landscape buffer to the interstate. And it's throughout the city, right? It's from, from every part of I-95. The, the, the issue with this one is it's such a small corner clip. So, you know, from a, from a staff technical perspective, you know, 60 feet is what the land development code, it's what we recommend. If from a policy perspective, you know, basically you're okay with the upslope and the material being here, we're okay with that too. 
yes, my, I kind of looked at this and was like, it, it's, I don't even think it's going to look good. It looked kind of ridiculous just to have 60 feet and then there's asphalt all around it. So I'm fine with three signs and the uh, I-95 buffer being removed. Thank you. Any other questions for Stephen? Thank you. And then we have a card from Brad Bocknett. He's with the applicant. Brad's a PE with Newkirk Engineering. Hi, my name is Brad Balkman, 747 Hope Street, Orm Beach, Florida. I uh, just wanted to appreciate the, the search you guys do. Uh, I, I love working with Orm Beach. We are a local firm here in Orm Beach and are growing, and uh, appreciate all the work we do here as well and all the support we have as well from the staff. Uh, if there's any questions in regards to these waivers or the public benefits that we have uh, available for this project, please let me know. Any questions for Brad? Any further discussion on 9C? Do you need a motion? I'd like to move approval of uh, Ordinance 2022-34. Second. Is that, is, that with the, yeah. oh. is that with the changes? Because if we just approve it the way it is, I think we're going to have a problem. So I believe the first one is a zoning map amendment. So, so C is just the zoning, right? And then item D is the one where I believe you, where you'll want to make the amendment right. for the two items. Perfect. Correct, right. Randy. Second the motion. Moved and seconded. Please call the vote. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. Nine D. Ordinance number 2022-35, an ordinance authorizing the execution and issuance of a development order for a planned business development to be located at 520 and 540 Flagler Road to be known as the North Interchange, authorizing the development of the property for business and storage warehouses, indoor mini self-storage and outdoor RV and boat storage under certain conditions, establishing conditions and expirations of approval, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of Ordinance Number 2022-35, read by title only. Thank you. And then we just need a motion with the uh, changes. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve with these changes. Three wall signs to total 450 square feet. Allowance of a 10-foot buffer from the required 60-foot buffer. Second. Steve, is, does that does that cover everything we talked about? Okay. I second it. Second it. Anything else, Stephen? That you wanted to say? Okay. Brad, anything else you wanted to say? Any further discussion? Yeah, just to clarify that the reduced buffer, the materials that would have been required in the 60-foot buffer, will be included in the. They're already on the plan. Good point. So they've already put it on the plan that, okay. that the op option you're adopting. Okay. All right. Just to, yeah, just to get it on the record. Please call the vote. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. 9 Ordinance number 2022-36, an ordinance amending paragraph C, official zoning map of section 2-01 established of article 1, establishment of zoning districts and official zoning map of chapter 2, district and general regulations of the city of Ormond Beach land Devel development code by amending the official zoning map to rezone real property as a result of the comprehensive plan amendments that implemented the provisions of the second amended Interlocal service boundary agreement between the City of Ormond Beach and County of Volusia, authorizing revision of the official zoning map, repealing all inconsistent ordinances or parts thereof, and setting forth an effective date. This is the second reading of Ordinance Number 2022-36, read by title only. Thank you, Susan. I don't have any cards. I move approval of Ordinance Number 2022-36. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Commissioner Kent. Yes. Commissioner Persis. Yes. Commissioner Littleton. Yes. Commissioner Selby. Yes. Mayor Partington. Yes. And we will close the public hearings. Start with reports, suggestions, and requests. And we start with City Manager Joy Shanahan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate it. Um, just a couple of things. I uh, just kind of wanted to update you on Hurricane Ian. Uh, finance staff is tracking our expenses 
and we will be meeting with FEMA representatives uh, shortly. Uh, they come in, have a meeting, a pre-meeting with staff, get to know what's going on and what issues we have, and then we follow through with that. So th that seems to be the easy part. Debris removal, Sean will come up and speak briefly about uh, debris removal. Um, and while he's coming forward, I just want to talk to you a little bit about um, gated communities. Um, FEMA, as it often does, changes the rules for each storm when you're um, for debris removal. Uh, this time, in, in prior years, we would have a list of our, our gated communities or our private HOAs, and we'd get a right of entry form from them. We would submit that to FEMA, and it was gold. This year, we, uh, we would just have to submit a letter with the list. This time, we had to submit every single right of entry form, and Margaret Emery, our deputy city attorney, had to do a letter had to include uh, attorney general opinions about why it was necessary to pick that um, up on private property. We had to submit that to the Florida Department of Emergency Management, and then they submitted it to FEMA. So that's been about two and a half, almost three weeks now, and um, we have not heard from FEMA about that. We have talked to uh, Congressman Waltz's office. We have talked to Representative Leake's office. Uh, state FEMA has told us that everything was in order and they submitted it to FEMA. I had um, several conversations over the last uh, couple of days with my colleagues in Volusia County. None of the cities have had any of their debris picked up on private property or in HOAs. Um, we're going to have a telephone call tomorrow with the cities to see you know, what our plan is going forward. The real risk is that we cannot pick up debris in private communities without approval from FEMA or we will not be reimbursed. Um, staff is getting an estimate from Crowder Golf on what those costs might be. Um, if we pick them up without that prior approval, there's no chance, there's a big chance we wouldn't get reimbursed. So we're trying to figure out a path forward for that. I've been in contact with several of the HOAs and their presidents to let them know where we're at on that process. I've talked to the city attorney about different paths forward. But I just kind of wanted to update you on that because we're getting close to nearing the end of our first pass of debris removal. And you might be hearing from some of those HOAs. I've been in regular contact with them, but I just kind of wanted to let you know where that was. And so, Sean, you want to give us an update on debris? Yes. Um, we sent you your, your daily report earlier this afternoon. To visualize where we're at, this is our familiar um, Jackie Rupp's. Sorry. Uh, to, this is our familiar graphic that we use, Jackie Robinson Ballpark. Um, we picked up through yesterday approximately 85,000 cubic yards. If you were to put that in Jackie Robinson, you would have a stack 21 feet tall. Um, it's a lot of debris. We still have a, we still have a lot more to go. Um, a little bit of a preview of what you're going to see tomorrow. We've got 19 trucks on the road today. Um, I just looked while we were sitting here. We've, we picked up over 5,000 additional yards today um, you know so we are we are working feverishly towards getting the, the the city streets cleaned up as best as we can um, we are we are rapidly getting towards that first pass completion of those areas that aren't negated communities um, we made great headway out west this past weekend over the weekend from Friday through today breakaway um, we haven't got to breakaway trails yet because that's a gated community Hunters Ridge and a lot of those neighborhoods that are associated with Hunters Ridge those have been those have been you know look look a lot better um, we're finishing up the beach side. We're working through the center part of town here. Um, you know, we did a we, we asked Crowder Golfer actually Thompson, who is um, you know doing that that audit for us, to do a windshield survey for us, and they emailed that to me. Kevin emailed that to me while we were sitting here. We're looking at probably for those gated communities. Right now, our bill is about we're at about one point two million dollars with what we picked up so far. That eighty five thousand, we probably in the gated communities have about two hundred thousand dollars worth of debris to be picked up so that's the magnitude of, of what we're what we're what we're trying to make sure that we get a, a full authority from FEMA to be able to do so um, if you have any questions um, please feel free to ask yeah Commissioner Ken yeah so Joyce or Randy I'm not trying to be funny with this so the private um, gated communities it's it's a problem with FEMA getting paid is it a real big problem I'm assuming the answer is probably yes if we got the debris and took it out of the 
private gated areas and put it on the street where it's not private gated and let let golf crowder pick it up i can Sorry. i can address that commissioner Ken. Um, you thought about it didn't you we we that's one of our that is one of the easy one of the first solutions we had the problem with doing that did you think about using the helicopter <laughs> we would love to use a helicopter to do that the problem with doing that is breakaway trails the two entrances to breakaway trails timber creek road county road state road 40 state highway um chelsea place two entrances state road 40 and avenue to state highway county we would be we would be putting it on non-city streets and so we wouldn't have control of, of when that gets picked up but could you bring it to a city street we could, but that would be a lot of that. That would be a lot of the closest we, city street where it's not going to impede other people. Have the would, golf crowder trucks right there, solve the problem, get paid. So let let me jump in on the legal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so public resources for private interests. Uh, the answer is no. I mean, the way you can do that is if the private HOAs pay us to do that, because otherwise they're receiving a benefit benefit as a private interest that is paid for by our general taxpayers. So that's the real problem with that. <clears throat> um, we can remove the debris from within the HOA as long as we have a contract and they're going to pay us for that. But if they're going to do that, then really what they ought to do is to enter into a contract with their own hauler to have it removed, and then the residents within the private gated HOAs pay that cost. Um, so that's it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It's not as easy a fix as you might otherwise think it might be. Um, FEMA in the past has been pretty good about um, reimbursing local governments when they pick it up, but we still have to have a contract between the local government entity and the private HOA in order to uh, serve as a foundational authorization for that to occur. Is that how we did it in the past, Mr. Hayes? It is, and did, yes. and did the HOA get refunded like the city got refunded? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, sure, so yeah, um, I guess I'm, you know, when you say it's a private entity, I mean, the roads are private because the, the HOA owns their roads, but these are taxpayers, our Ormond Beach residents. I mean, we pick up their trash, we pick up their yard waste, you know, on their yard waste day. I mean, I did, I, to me, it, it's a, it seems like a legal technicality that certainly to the taxpayer, to the residents of those communities, makes no sense. So can you help me to <laughs> explain it to them? One of them is a future commissioner. <laughs> she well, lives in I, Broadwater. I can tell you that there's a lot of legal authority on that specific question, and, and the answer is the same answer. It is a private gated community, and so they're responsible internally for their own affairs, and that's the roads, it's, it's the sidewalks, it's the debris removal. They're taxpayers, but the general public doesn't have access to the to the um, amenities within that gated community, and so the flip side of the argument is is that if we use general purpose taxpayers' dollars to um, to benefit a private gated community, then they're getting an extra benefit that our general public residents do not get because they do not get to go access those gated communities. They don't get to enjoy the trees when you know they're not blown down or the roads or anything else and so that's that's why the law and the legal requirement is the way that it is so, okay so i guess what i'm struggling with is how do we do we have a separate kind of agreement to pick up their trash so uh local governments can provide a service to a local driver a, a local a, a private hoa if you will as long as the private hoa pays for the service so they don't in other words they don't get the service based on the general pack taxpayers dollars they the residents within that hoa have to pay for that service we'd have to cost it out they'd have to pay the city for that in the past fema has agreed to to reimburse the city for the pickup that's that's the rub this time around because so far that has not happened and so the alternative to a quick pickup is either the HOA can contract with its own contractor, which is frankly probably what they should do, or the city can act as an intermediary and pick it up, assuming that the city has a contract with the HOA to do that, and then the HOA reimburses or pays the city, or not reimburses, but pays the city for the cost of those services. If the city is going to do that, then it's a question of 
how much how many resources do we have to make that accommodation on top of everything else that the staff is doing and, and that's really more of a management question so so okay so I'm I'm still sort of back to the services that we provide in a non-storm environment where we pick up their trash and we pick up their their yard waste and their recycle do we have separate agreements this does the city have a separate agreement to do that it's on private property you know the I can't drive through uh, breakaway trails when their gates are closed you know I mean how did how does that work how, what's the is there a distinction there do we, I'm sorry I didn't follow the question okay so the question is does this we're does the city have a separate agreement with a gated community, any gated community, to pick up their trash or to pick up their recycle or to pick up um, their yard waste, the rate, their normal yard waste, right? You know, the once a week yard waste, like what the Waste Pro does. Do we have separate agreements with each so of we, those HOAs? I, I think we have an agreement to um, allow public vehicles, you know, public access to the roadways inside there in order to. To do those pickups, um, they pay the same rates, I believe, Joyce. Right? That any other resident does. Um, this is not a good analogy with a um, storm removal pickup within the Gator community. It's just it, they're they're not they're not the same issue legally speaking. Um, and all I can do is to tell you what the law is. I can't tell you why the law yeah. is that way other than the general explanation that are provided okay. to you. But Randy, doesn't each homeowner in that gated community pay a stormwater fee, a solid waste fee, a water bill for those services that we provide, whereas hurricane pickup is not a normal assessment that the city charges on a yes. monthly basis? Right. I think that's the heart of Commissioner Selby's right. question. So yeah. they're paying for all those services on a monthly basis like we all do and hurricanes are separate and apart from that yeah sure no i mean i get that and i get the fact that fema who's going to reimburse the city um you know has their set of rules and we either you know either it works or doesn't work but here, here's where i am on my last meeting <laughs> is i don't want to leave these people hanging i don't think they should have to pay for it out of their own pocket well, let me, let me tell you that I, I'm just making you aware of the situation. So far, the HOAs have been very understanding. I'm hopeful that tomorrow's meeting I'll have a better idea where the other cities are. And if when, we, when I talk to those other cities, I will come back to the commission and get some direction about where we go from there. Uh, some of the HOAs have had creative ideas about drawing up a contract that Come and pick it up, and if we don't get reimbursed, we'll pay you or something like that. So I think there's lots of ways to address the solution, but I just wanted to make you aware of what the issue was. Okay, very good. I didn't want to start up the point. Well, I just, and I just and I just you know which you can you could expect. I just don't again. I don't think that those residents, simply because they live in a gated community, should be should um, have to bear the financial burden of uh, that debris removal. And we're hopeful that the federal government will stick to what they've done in the past and agree with us in the same right. way. All right, so that's debris removal. Um, we're moving ahead with, with that regard. Um, I have one question. Uh, yes, sir. So my debris got picked up Sunday. Two weeks ago, it was mentioned we were adding Saturday to things, but did we add Sunday too? They've been working Sunday. They we, we, added, we added Saturday for, for um, Waste Pro. Crowder Gulf, who's working for us for debris, the, the, the large debris removal, has been, been working seven days a week, oh, 12 sorry. hours a day, since they began 26 days ago. Very good, Jerry. Thank you. And so they're, they're cleaning up, and we'll get uh, fixing for a second pass there. Um, I'll give you a rundown on upcoming events. Um, we have uh, D.A.R.E. graduation on November 3rd. Um, I guess that's at St. Brendan's. And then movies on the Halifax. Commissioner Kent, this is your opportunity to see Goonies outside. Nice. Um, hometown Heroes drive through Luncheon. You know, we um, Halifax um, Health has sponsored that for the last several years. That's a drive through Luncheon. It's very, very popular with our, our senior uh, veterans. And that's on November 5th from 11 a.m. to 12.30. It 
if you're coming, please come early because it ain't going to last long. Because they, they get they're right in line at 11 o'clock uh, waiting for their lunch. Veterans Day celebration is on November 10th at the Senior Center Ballroom from 12 to 2 p.m. And then also um, on Memorial Day, the Art, the Ormond Beach Memorial Art Museum has a Veterans Day celebration at 11 a.m. And then on November 15th, that's when we take the oath of office with the new commissioners. Home for the Holiday Parade is on December 10th. And so that kind of wraps you up till the end of the year. And then um, lastly, I, I'm uh, pleased to report that I was um, appointed to the International City Managers uh, Association Credentialing Advisory Board. They provide uh, credentialing for uh, managers that meet certain qualifications. There's about um, 2,000 managers throughout this country that are credentialed managers. I've been a credentialed manager since 2009, and I will be on uh, the board reviewing future credentialed managers. So I'm very pleased about that. So thank you very much. Can I ask Joyce one question? This is in the weeds, but yes. are you going to... I know you've talked about changing the credentialing uh, thing for like military base commanders and that right. type of thing. Are you, are you going to try to do that? Yeah, I, it's certainly. We we believe that your military service closely follows local government service, and uh, we want. Um, there's a number of people on the board that would support that same idea. You have to have so many hours of military service, um, hours of schooling, and time in the seat, if you will. You have to be at least eight years as a manager before you can really apply. And those eight years at serving as a base commander would certainly um, uh, account for that. And you know, the city has a history of uh, employing um, intern veterans, so uh, we've had a couple of those and we're very proud of that. Thank you, Joyce. City Attorney Randy Hayes. Had other than to say once again, um, I've enjoyed working with each one of you, and um, I know you're all going to be successful in your, the next chapters of your life. So, uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. And tonight we start with Commissioner Littleton. Thank you, Mayor. I didn't do it up there, but I did want to go down the line and talk about each one of you in a good way. That. Uh, Mr. Hayes, I'll start this way. I mean, you're the best city attorney going. I mean, you know, you just you're so knowledgeable. It was just proven up here, and you're quite an asset to the city. I mean, we just gave you your review and you received high marks, so you know that. But I'm truly going to miss your intelligence, and the city's in a good place with you up here, Miss Shanahan. Wow. I mean, every, the commission knows Joyce runs this city like nobody's business. She is the absolute best city manager in the state. Uh, she's going to she's going to carry the city forward no matter who's up here. She runs it on the daily so well and you know, I'm going to continue to live in this city and again, I have all the confidence in the world that this is going to be the best city to live in Volusia County because you're in charge. Thank you. Ms. Persis, Commissioner Persis, you know, we do have a lot of little fun and games up here. And I really like it because I had some fun with Commissioner Bowen when he was here. And, you know, it, it's been nice sitting next to you because oftentimes when I'm thinking of something, someone's up here talking. I don't know, it's a little, con you know, I'm not sure about it. And I look at your face, and you'll I mean you'll turn to each other and give like a glance, and I'm like, oh, all right. So I'm not crazy in thinking what I'm thinking. And I appreciate that. And you and Carl are friends, and thank you for all the kind words you said. Commissioner Kent, the mayor mentioned some of the things up here when we were up front, and he mentioned the little things, he mentioned the big things, or more so, over the 19 years, and 
the big things get the attention of the papers and the headlines, but the little things that the mayor mentioned add up to a big thing, and that's a big impact on the city. And your time here at the city of Ormond Beach has you've served it well, and the city is more dynamic, better looking, particularly on Granada, uh, because of the, your little ideas, and, and truly the big ideas too. So thank you. Uh, it's one of the reasons I moved to Ormond Beach and enjoy living here. Commissioner Selby, uh, you know, I never got to, I don't think I've ever publicly thanked you for, you know, there was one time on a trip where I don't go through the whole story, but I went to the emergency room, almost didn't make it, and Commissioner Selby was right there with me. We were out of state, and, you know, until like 2 o'clock in the morning, and of course my wife was all, you know, to see about it, and uh, thank you for that. Oh, yeah, you know, and, you know I, I choked, well, I wasn't choking, but I got a piece of potato and steak stuck above, below my, you know, little lung thing for air, and but above my scary. Yes. So on uh, the 16th, stomach. yes. You, when the sunshine law is lifted, you gentlemen can all go out to dinner. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> hear the rest of the story. Right, right. Yes, yes. But we're not getting steak or potatoes. Yeah, well, I, I still eat Mashed steak. Mashed potatoes right. and hamburger. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Ground beef. Yes, right. Uh, thank you for that. That type of stuff um, that you do, you know, it's it's sort of a shame that you were an elected official because, of course, people will say just the most awful things about us up here, but you are truly a great guy, and you have a great family, and I thank you for that. Thank you. And Mayor Partington, last but not least, you know, I'm so glad I never ran against you for Zone 4 City Commission. You were a great commissioner, of course. Uh, you've been an awesome mayor to be around. You have a great family. And I just would love it. I just I've actually loved having you as mayor and working with you and seeing how the city has been in your years of service. You know, you had big shoes to fill too, you know? And you've done wonderful and I'm just proud of being up here and the people up here and uh, I'll miss it. And with that, I'll say good night. Thank you. Commissioner Selby. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I uh, actually prepared some comments, and uh, um, uh, if, if, if you'll allow me, I'm going to read the comments, because it'll probably go a little quicker if I read it anyway. Um, so it's been an honor to serve the citizens of Ormond Beach for the past six years as the Zone 1 Commissioner. As I reflect on this, I'm truly grateful that I served all six years with you, Bill, you, Troy, and you, Rob and two years with Rick Bohm and the last four years with you, Susan. Uh, we have accomplished a, trem a tremendous amount. Here's a partial list that I compiled last night from memory. We responded to two major hurricanes, helping residents to bounce back to normal life quickly. We updated the downtown master plan, which in part led to several new restaurants, um, businesses, and art galleries. We endured the COVID-19 crisis, navigating the city through tumultuous waters. We constructed floating docks and a breakwater in Casson Park, enhancing the boater experience. We consistently kept the tax rate low, second or third lowest city in the county, keeping more money in the citizens' pockets while maintaining superior quality of life. We contributed to the Mary McLeod Bethune Statue Fund, honoring one of the most notable African Americans from our area. We completed the exterior renovations of the McDonald House, demonstrating our commitment to historical preservation. We continued to support Pace Center for Girls, which educates teen mothers, teenage mothers. We facilitated the lease modification with the Ormond Memorial Art Museum and Gardens, enabling them to raise the funds to build their magnificent new addition. We signed on early and in a big way with First Step Shelter, where over 250 homeless men and women have graduated 
and are now living on their own. We demonstrated our commitment to enhancing the environment by partnering with the Garden Club of Halifax Country, transforming Vodner Park into an all-native plant educational community resource. We purchased not one, but two new fire engines in the same year, confirming our commitment to Ormond's outstanding fire department. High wage jobs have been a priority for us, and we made huge progress on that goal with the relocation of Security First Insurance corporate offices to Ormond Crossings. A longtime Ormond Beach family owned company stays in Ormond Beach. We updated the Parks and Rec Master Plan with significant public input, mapping the next decade of leisure services improvements. We established a dedicated millage rate for police and fire capital purchases, tangibly showing our commitment to keeping the citizens of Ormond Beach safe and removing the need for police and fire necessary equipment purchases to compete with other city capital needs. We secured a substantial grant from the state of Florida for septic to sewer conversion for three streets inside the city, Oak, Magnolia, and Bonita, demonstrating our unwavering commitment to water quality. We assisted the Friends of the Performing Arts Center in securing the funding they need to renovate the Ormond Beach PAC, modernizing this gem of a city facility that so many residents count on for their quality of life. We've taken the first steps toward our goal of zero reclaimed water into the intercoastal waterway by committing the funds to buy the land necessary to build a gigantic surface storage lake for excess reclaimed water pumped in in the rainy season and pumped out in the dry season. We, we're nearing completion of the new indoor gymnasium at the South Ormond Neighborhood Center providing another excellent recreational facility for the youth and adults of Ormond Beach. I'm sure if we reviewed the minutes of the City Commission meeting over the last six years, well over 120 meetings, we would discover many more worthwhile accomplishments of this commission, city staff, volunteers on city boards and committees, and the citizens of the City of Ormond Beach. This is truly a team sport many hands and minds are required to achieve anything of value. As I reflect on my tenure on the City Commission, I look back with pride, knowing the campaign promises I made have come to fruition. My platform had five basic planks, low taxes, high wage jobs, enhancing quality of life, protecting the environment, and never defund the police. To the new city commission that will be seated in two weeks, I offer a couple of suggestions. As you adopt the organizational procedures ordinance, consider a couple of changes. One, the vice mayor is largely a ceremonial position. Have it rotate annually so that all of the commission members get experience in that role. And two, amend the procedures to allow any commissioner to add an item for discussion purposes to the agenda. Currently, only the mayor has the power to add items to the agenda, which is formulated by the city manager and the city attorney. In closing, I have three requests. One, permit me to continue to serve as Ormond Beach's representative to the First Step Shelter Board for four more months through the end of February 2023. First Step Shelter will hold its first ever gala on Saturday, February 4th, 2023, at the Daytona Beach Hilton. I've been instrumental in securing the presenting sponsor and working on other sponsors and would like to carry this project through. Two, you know that I'm passionate about septic to sewer. Gave about a year of my life, uh, maybe a little longer, uh, and a lot of hide. Um, you know that I'm, I'm passionate about it and help this commission during our most recent budget adoption process to alloc allocate $200,000 for technical assistance for the 21 condominium complexes on A1A that have not yet hooked up to city sewer. So in that vein, and as a private citizen, I would like to serve the city as a volunteer ombudsman, I don't know what the appropriate title would be, but as a volunteer, 
connecting these condo complexes to the resources available to them at the city level and beyond, which will facilitate them transitioning from their current package plants to city sewer. My third request, as president of the Ormond Beach Police Foundation, I would like the opportunity to make a presentation at some future mutually agreeable date to the City Commission covering the good works the Police Foundation has accomplished since its inception two years ago. Thank you to each and every one of you. I wish you the absolute best. Troy, I truly hope that you will be the next Volusia County District 4 Council person. You are unquestionably the most qualified candidate and the County Council needs independent thinkers. Susan, it's been such a pleasure to get to know you so much better while serving together these last four years on the Commission. You always have a smile and a kind word. Never lose that charm. It is magnetic and it brightens the day for everyone you come in contact with. Rob, I know your campaign didn't go anywhere near the way you had hoped. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Without the demands of a campaign, you have a lot more time to love on that new baby in your house. Your public service future looks very bright. It has been so great to get to know you and Chevelle. We might not have even met had we not served together on this commission. And Bill, I fully expect you to be reelected as mayor of Ormond Beach. You are the best person for the job. You have a positive attitude and you always look for the best in every situation. Your demeanor and your presence create a calm atmosphere where all views have the opportunity to be expressed. I truly hope that you are able to achieve your long range public service goal. And with that, I will say for the last time from this dais, good night. Uh, let's take a five minute recess and Commissioner Kent, we'll go to you. Yeah. All right. We will uh, call the meeting back to order. If uh, Mr. Daniels will behave back there, I think we can uh, continue and start with Commissioner Kent. Thank you, Mayor. My, my last time here to, uh, to say good night to everybody. And I want to start by giving the, the Mad Props Award to my wife, who I think sat through her very first entire commission meeting. <laughs> so um, thanks for coming back and hanging out and listening to the end, Heather. I, I love you and I appreciate it. And, and I really am going to start with you because someone who was absolutely not political at all, I don't think a political fiber in your being, um, wow. Wow. You, you've, you've grabbed the bull by the horns and you're, you're passionate about your husband and about your family and about this city and our county and I cannot thank you enough for the support you have given me and our family because the mayor said it earlier you know we decide to do this and our, and our families go along with it and you know, Heather and I had a had a real healthy discussion about the next move that I was going to do, and um, she, from the word go, said, "I'm here to support you. Whatever you want to do, I'm here to support you," and it means a lot. And years ago, Heather, you want to know because you didn't come to these meetings, but I would always give a mad props and uh, Mayor Kelly and Commissioner Boehm. They were like. What a, did you make that up? And I think they looked it up, and it's a real thing. So uh, I would always give someone mad props. So tonight, you get the mad props, girl, my girl. Uh, Joyce and Randy, I meant it after the 15th, and the new commission is sworn in. Listen, um, no longer your boss. I'm excited about just being your friends. You two are some of the finest human beings I have had the pleasure of knowing on this planet and um, you you are uh, great loving people and I've said enough about you in the past so I'll leave it at that you're great loving people thank you I'm gonna run down the line Commissioner Selby 
I have respected you, I would say, from the word go when you got here, but that's not the truth. I respected you before you got here, whenever I, I met you in our community. I love how your mind is with business decisions, and I love that you bring the, that business-like decision to a government body. It's needed, and it's appreciated, and that part is going, it definitely, there's going to be a void there. And, um, you know, I, I just, I wanted to tell you, I always listened to you, especially whenever you started talking about government like it was a business. Because, you know, you're blessed with common sense, and I'm, I'm proud to have, have sat beside you these past six years. But that's not my favorite thing about you. My favorite thing about you is the dad that you are. You and I recently, you know, for whatever reason, the planets aligned and we were at a, a Volusia League of Cities dinner and we sat together and it was just you and me. And Randy, it's okay because we just talked about family the entire time. And the mentorship that you have for your boys is phenomenal. And the way you light up talking about your grandkids and you can't fool any of us. We know that you knew better than your wife did exactly how many years you all were married. <laughs> and uh, that's that's good stuff. So my my favorite my favorite thing about you is is the dad that you are. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And um, to Commissioner Persis to Susan, I love that you and I share an education background, and our mind always goes to that. It is something that I've enjoyed about you, and I've appreciated that we've had this time together on the commission to get to know each other a little bit better. And that's another viewpoint, I think, that is needed on a government body, is somebody that is, is thinking in that realm of education. And it's, it's a super positive thing, and it's been a pleasure. And to Commissioner Littleton, to Rob, um, thank you for for the kind words he, you know you were there you don't know what an impact it had on me but this last fourth of july to see you with your your family you know um fatherhood looks great on you and like i told commissioner selby and i've told commissioner Baum, it truly is my favorite thing about about men that i know is if they're good dads and all signs look like you're a great dad and uh, I appreciate that because this world not knocking the moms we need great moms also but you, you need a good dad and your kids are fortunate to have you and this city has been fortunate to have you and it's 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 been a pleasure to work alongside of you uh, to the mayor gosh man Bill you and I got elected the same day, and we grew up in the same town, and we didn't meet until we came in these chambers. And we've talked about that over the years. I mean, we, we've gone to Washington, D.C. together and come home with the bacon. Um, you know, we, we met with uh, some great congressmen and some great senators, and they heard our vision and the needs that we had in Volusia County, more specifically Ormond Beach. And it, it, was, it was always great because we were successful but even if we weren't successful I think it would have been great I want to thank you for what you did tonight because you know the mayor has the ability um, to do what he did which was he saw that my son wasn't here and I said you know why it works one day this week and it's Sunday I, I'm sorry it's Tuesday it's today Tuesday and and he's he's asked them if he could get off at seven o'clock to be here for his dad which was a nice thing. But he has, you know, some drive time from Bel Air. So I, I really appreciate you, Mayor, changing some things around, stalling for a few minutes so that my kid could get here and see his dad. It's it's something that I won't I won't forget. There's no doubt in my mind, you know, I mean I I, I say that, I'm not trying to jinx anything, but there's no doubt in my mind you're coming back as mayor, as you should. You are the most qualified person. We don't want Ormond Beach to be shut down. There has never been 
explosive growth in Ormond Beach since you and I have been on this commission 19 years together. There's never been runaway, out of control spending in Ormond Beach. Those are lies because sometimes you just have to make up stuff when there's nothing true to try to make yourself look good. But the residents of Ormond Beach, I've always said, because I was told this a long time ago uh, by Sue Parkerson, they are the smartest voters around and they won't be fooled and the city will be better off having you at the helm for another two years. Um, it's a shame, you know, we, we, had a, a, we went sideways a little bit a couple years ago, but I want you to know, as a man, I respect you. As a mayor, I respect you. And again, truly my favorite thing about you is the father you are to your three girls. And, you know, Bill can get passionate up here and fired up from time to time. And I've always told you, like, that's my favorite part when you get like that. Even when it's been between you and me, because sometimes, you know, you got to get your Irish up, you know, your blood's got to boil a little bit because you got to get a little passionate about what you're talking about. And I love how you are always there for your family. And number one, you're a family man and you're a good dad. So with that, I say zone two, Ormond Beach, thank you very much for the privilege and honor to serve you. I am I am humbled to have been here this long. And uh, I say God bless to everybody. I love Ormond Beach. Have a good night. Thank you, Commissioner and Deputy Mayor Persons. Well, um, Joyce, I just want to congratulate you on your um, appointment that you mentioned. Congratulations. They got a good person, and I know you'll do your job as well as you do your job here. Um, I always like seeing women succeed, so congratulations again. Um, I just wanted to um, highlight a couple of um, events that I attended that the city put on that were just absolutely amazing. The first one was the employee appreciation that was at the Nova Community Center uh, about 10 days ago or a couple of weeks ago. And gosh, it was just great. There, all the employees were there, um, policemen, firemen, just all, many of the staff, they, everybody that could be there was there. And they got, and many of them got awards. They got pins for years of service. It was just a way to make everybody feel special. And I think it was just a wonderful, wonderful event. Um, I attended, um, uh, and I know with several others, I know the mayor was there, uh, the Council on Aging um, a couple of weeks ago, and it was, uh, they basically honored the Lloyd family, and, and they, they're a longtime standing family in Volusia County, and um, just how much influence that family has had on our community is just really kind of daunting, but it was a great, a great event. Um, also attended the Senior Center senior center games kickoff um, and the mayor was also there and that was just an amazing event I actually ran into somebody that I went to high school with um, her dad actually held the torch in the Olympics that was held in Atlanta was it 1988 or 6 or 8 I can't remember what year it was 86 oh, 96 sorry 96 and her dad actually you know ran a leg of the um leg of it holding the torch so he was the one that kind of kicked off the games he's you know an elderly gentleman now but um i got to catch up with one of my classmates but it was just a great event well attended just you know made everybody feel excited um finally i just want to you know thank dwight troy and rob for their dedication for their service and their love for this beautiful city it shows it's it's shown you know totally um, every time we've been at our meetings and I admire each one of you and I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. And I received a letter which I'll read into the record and then um, leave this with you, Susan, uh, from Mary Jo Meese with the Garden Club of the Halifax Country. Um, it says, on behalf of the Garden Club of the Halifax country we'd like to thank you for the ace civic engagement award for vadner park our membership is very honored to have received this award our club has enjoyed our partnership with the city of ormond beach on this project and look forward to continuing our relationship on future projects thank you again mary joe meese 
corresponding secretary, GCHC, Garden Club of the Halifax Country. I thought that was nice, uh, nicely written, handwritten, succinct, and, and so I'm putting that in the record for posterity. Uh, commission, as always, you've done a great job tonight, and uh, I think you've covered everything, so I won't belabor it. We could go on and on. Uh, certainly with six years of history, there's lots of great stories, lots of great camaraderie. Uh, you know, as far as I know, nobody's put up for sale signs, so I think you guys are going to still be around. We'll have plenty of time to, to rehash all of that, and I look forward to it, and I uh, look forward to y'all continuing to be involved in, in different ways, but uh, thank you for everything that you do and have done, for, and will continue to do for the city of Warman Beach, and uh, your recognition tonight is, is very well deserved. So with that, we'll be adjourned.